Welcome to Just Invest Today, and today we're talking about the expected market crash. You hear people like Michael Burry talking about the crash in options trading. You hear about Drunken Miller talking about the crash and just how everything's just too expensive in the market. You see Phil Town with over 30% of his money in cash. He's been selling off stuff. Same with Michael Burry. They all have been selling off stuff, expecting a crash. So what can we do? Even though we know we cannot time the market, we can still prepare for it because we understand that where the market is today, it's probably in like the eighth, ninth inning. So let's prepare and let's talk about it. Morris Perbride talked about how he was not prepared in 2000 and 2009 with the market crash during the housing market bubble and how he just didn't see it. He's got blindsided completely. He talked about this in an Indian interview presentation that he did. So go watch it when you can. But I want to give you some tips on what he said and some strategies to use. If you want to use it, you can, but you don't have to. I'm just talking about it in this video. Before I get into this video, guys, can you please like this channel? Subscribe down below. Thank you. I appreciate it so much. So the first thing he talked about was he had too much hubris. He was just overconfident in his skills. From 1999 to 2007, he averaged 32% a year and he never had a down year. So he had so much confidence in his ability. He didn't really pay attention to what was happening in the scene that the housing bubble was right there. So what he said in this interview slash presentation is that he just wishes that he was kind of more aware of what's going around and that he actually owned companies that actually depended on the capital markets and the financial system, like insurance companies. So when you are looking for companies to buy, especially during this time, you have to make sure that your company doesn't need to go to the financial system or capital mar markets to generate cash. It has enough cash to survive any kind of crash, any kind of uh, market hiccup that happens in the market. So make sure your company does not have to rely on the capital markets to generate cash, has enough cash on the balance sheet to survive two, three years, whatever. Number two, he regrets actually not having at least like 10, 15, 20% of the cash on the sideline to take advantage of this. So when this crash happened in 2007 to like 2009, around that time, he was negative 40% for like two, three years after that. And the people in his fund were running for the hill. They got out of there. They want nothing to do with that. So they were running for the hills. He was fully invested. So he had no money to take advantage of all the undervalued companies that the market was giving him. The people were running out of the fund. So he had to actually generate more cash to give back to his investors. So it just all went downhill from there. But luckily he did recover from that a huge mistake. And he said that he likes to have now 10, 20% in cash. I'm not sure if he still does that. It's a huge topic. Some people love to be fully invested. Some people like to have cash on the side, especially when they know they're on the eighth, ninth inning of the market. So tell me what your strategy is. Would you like to have cash on the side? Do you like to like uh, just be fully invested all the time? Tell me what you think. So the third thing, Motors Probi actually made a checklist of items that he needed to look at before he made an investment, the mistakes he made in the past, and the mistakes of the greatest investors. What kind of mistakes did they do? And see if he could actually find any things that you can actually look back and say, oh, if he didn't make this mistake, his investment would have been good. So having a checklist is super key, man. So make your own checklist, find out what mistakes investors made what mistakes what mistakes have you made in your investment career have you like sold too early have you like bought into a company that wasn't generating cash and they had a bad balance sheet think about like warren buffett he bought into berkshire hathaway that was a mistake he always says because it was in a dying industry are you buying a company in the dying industry that it's not going anywhere he bought dexter shoes he did not look at any extrinsic risk and the Chinese came in, they actually made shoes cheaper and they were delivering stuff from overseas back into the US at a cheaper price and that went bankrupt pretty much. So think about risks that are in your portfolio. Think about making a checklist of items that can cause huge disturbances in your portfolio or can cause 
big bankruptcies in your portfolio. So watch out for that. So the fourth thing he talks about is he actually started talking to someone and about his investments because, and I think he started talking to Guy Spear about his investments more because that's like his closest friend when it comes to investing. And this is key because someone like talking to you about your investments can tell you what went wrong, like what's going on with your investments, if they like it or dislike it, if they agree or disagree, because sometimes you can just get in your own way. And this goes back to about he was too overconfident. So he started talking to Morris Bribe because he actually talked to Charlie Munger about this. And Charlie Munger said himself that he talked to Warren about all his investments. Warren talks to Charlie and they bounce ideas back. They disagree and agree on stuff. And that helps him think through issues that this company might have, but he's not looking at it because he's seeing it one way. And then his investment partner will see it another way. So it's sometimes good to have someone to talk to, someone to bounce the ideas off and see if he agrees with your investment, disagrees. And if he disagrees, you can try to find better points to actually win your argument. And if you can't, then maybe that's a huge risk for this company. And maybe you shouldn't own it if you can't uh, find a better point than his disagreement. So watch out for that. The last thing you got to prepare for for the market crash is that you got to make sure you're spending more time Focusing on the downside than the upside. What can go wrong with this company? What am I looking at at this company to make sure I ain't losing any money on my investment? And that's super key because everyone always just looks at the upside. They don't care about the downside anymore. And when you focus on the downside, that's going to limit your risk as much as possible because your whole investment career, you're trying not to lose money. Like that's your main objective. Charlie Munger, Warren Buffett talks about the number one rule is don't lose money. And the second rule is focus on rule number one, don't lose money. So guys, you can't lose money. And to do that, you got to focus on the downside protection first. So always question your investments, question different things about it. Even if you have the an answers, just invert it. See what's going on with the company. If you can disagree harder, if you can... Um, find little quirks or cracks in your investment theory or your thesis. So that's what you need to do. And that's why it's good to talk to someone about your investment if you can. So that's it for this video. Tell me what you think. Are you going to use any of these strategies? Do you disagree? Do you agree? Leave a comment down below. Can you please like this video? Subscribe to my channel.